I'm so sorry, this is terrible news, obviously. What happened to him, you ask? How about you hear it from him directly? It wasn't so much a pressure meeting those people and working with those people because I was a kid, but the pressure was saying here. He wasn't joking. Turns out the man was led to some horrible choices by the industry. There's a boy with a voice like that that had the records that he had that could have easily transformed into one of the greatest male vocals of all time, end up tooting himself and change. Care to guess who's responsible for all of this? Here's your answer. He set up rings in Hollywood. And the people that he brought in, if y'all tell me if I'm lying, Quincy Jones brought in Fresh Prince. Mm -hmm. I don't need yes. Kevin Kane. There have been several cases of things in Hollywood looking one way, and the reality being a completely different story. We've seen stars lose their money, lose their lives, and in Tevin Campbell's case, lose his position in the industry. If the name doesn't ring a bell, that's because the man's light was dimmed when it was just starting to shine, simply because he wasn't the most conventional artiste of his time. Of course, there have been several stars who have been burnt at the stake because people around them did not agree with how they chose to live their lives, but Campbell's story takes that perspective to a whole new level. How else would you explain going from the protege of one of the greatest singers, Aretha Franklin, considered the Empress of Soul, to getting completely shut out of the music game? His story has been used to serve as a warning to others about the dangers of walking the unusual road. However, ending up in this position wasn't entirely a function of Campbell making poor decisions. It was more about him getting surrounded by people that didn't have his best interest at heart. This may be difficult to believe because the man, a boy at the time, was working with names like Quincy Jones, Prince, Al B, Sure, and Joe DC. In the 90s, having these names back, you was equal to being in the best possible position to succeed in the industry, but this was far from the case for Campbell. I mean, the reality is that he was actually successful, because how many teenagers from the 90s had Grammy-winning producers lined up ready to risk it all, just to get their production hands on their vocals? Here's a hint, not a lot. But it turns out all of this might have set him up to fail in the grand scheme of things. The thing about Campbell's demise from the most rated people in the industry is that it was slow. Not because his musical capabilities were declining, but because he had been consistently making the headlines of some odd news. What's more is that rumors also started to make rounds around the same time that he might have been granting favors to some of the big names that helped him by paying them in kind. Well, as for the other parts of his story that weren't rumors, the singer himself addressed them, even claiming those to be the foundational reasons for why things went far south in his career. Although most people believe that it's normal for child stars to face problems pushing their early breakthrough into adulthood, Tevin Campbell's story gives a whole new definition to those problems. Feel sad. I know. The music industry is filled with several kinds of talent. For some, it's powerful lyrics, while others are blessed with incredible vocals. But in Campbell's case, he had it all. Born in Waxahachie, Texas, Tevin Campbell, by the age of four, had a passion for singing. Likened to such greats as Stevie Wonder and Michael Jackson, Campbell began by singing gospel, first as a choir member, and then as a soloist at Jacob's Chapel in a small town just south of Dallas, Texas. Apart from his favorite singer, Aretha Franklin, his greatest influence as a child was probably his mother, Rhonda Byrd. As Campbell told Dennis Hunt of the Los Angeles Times. Yeah, I think they are sort of like split up over, that was one of the many fights that they were, one of the many disagreements that they wow. were having at that time that they were working with me. My mother pushed me and made me see trying to be a big solo singer was something I should do. Without her pushing, I'd still be in the background. To some extent, that's what happened to her. She has a good singing voice that she never fully developed. I guess nobody pushed her to get ahead. She didn't want to see me waste my talent too. When I was younger, I wasn't sure what I wanted, but she knew what was best for me and I went along with it. Rhonda went on to become Tevin's co-manager. However, one of the most significant parts of Tevin's story can be traced back to Quincy Jones. Besides Jones being one of the first people to even give Campbell a platform to explore the lengths of his talent, the legendary producer also connected him to several other greats of their time. We can go we want With his two lead vocals on Jones's Grammy-winning Back on the Block album as a teenager, Campbell garnered a lot of attention in the early 1990s. 
Later, with his powerful singing on Round and Round, the most endearing song from the Minneapolis Marvel Graffiti Bridge soundtrack, he practically stole the show from Prince. The star-making machine debuted his own album, T-E-V-I-N, on Jones's Quest Records, showcasing his talents to the world. And sure enough, Tevin did sound like a young Stevie Wonder at the time, particularly with his singing on the lush ballad, Tell Me What You Want Me To Do, which was in the pop and R&B top 40 nationally in 1991. Though at the time, there was always the danger of backlash when young artists were so highly praised, Jones and Benny Medina, the executive producers of the album, weren't nervous about setting high expectations. Jones even good-naturedly called the singer Tevin the Great. That appears to have been an inside joke between Jones and Tevin because, as the story goes, immediately after the release of his album, rumors began to circulate that the two were not at all professional in their relationship. The stories floating around at the time had several people asking questions like, did Quincy Jones make Tevin Campbell gay? The fact that this is a question being asked already raises several eyebrows, but the stakes climb to an all-time high when you find out Jaguar Wright also alluded to some things in that line. Wright, the singer and songwriter who has been making headlines for her controversial claims about the music industry, has done it again. She recently revealed that Tevin Campbell might have been taken advantage of by people he looked up to in his early days as a singer. I, I know Tevin, but we're not friends. Him, him and Latoya were friends. In an interview with The Breakfast Club, Wright said that Campbell was left with people that did things to him when he was vulnerable. She said that she witnessed some of the dark situations he was in and tried to help him, but he was too scared to speak up. Wright said that Campbell's career suffered because of the trauma he endured and that he turned to drugs and alcohol to cope. She also added that he was blacklisted by the industry for being gay, stating that he was not given the respect and recognition he deserved. How does a boy with a voice like that, that had the records that he had, that could have easily transformed into one of the greatest male vocalists of all time, end up substituting himself for drugs and change on Hollywood Boulevard? How does that happen with a gift like his? Wright said. Wright said that she decided to speak out because she wanted to expose the truth and protect other artists from being exploited. She mentioned that she hoped that Campbell would find healing and peace and that he would eventually come forward and tell his own story. Wright's allegations have sparked mixed reactions from fans and celebrities. Some have praised her for being brave and honest, while others have accused her of lying and slandering. Campbell himself did not immediately respond to Wright's claims, but he had already previously denied rumors in that line. Wright said that she was not afraid of the backlash or the legal consequences of her statements. She stated that she was speaking from her heart and her experience, and that she had nothing to lose. She also admitted that she wanted to use her voice to make a difference and inspire others to do the same. Let's just say Campbell wasn't particularly pleased with her claims. After the singer caught wind of her comments, he threatened to take legal action against her in a series of now-deleted tweets. According to Jagra Wright, I was a S worker on Hollywood BLVE, he tweeted. It's called online defamation. Do not test T-E-V-I-N. My lawyer is on deck. I would take that YouTube vid down if I were you. My past is well documented and I've learned from it and I own it. I will not tolerate anyone telling lies about me online. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. God don't like ugly and ain't too crazy about pretty. Tevin Campbell says he reported the video and sent right well wishes. YouTube video by Jaguar Wright reported. Still, let's pray for her. Seems like she could use some positive energy in her life. This wasn't all Campbell had to say on the subject matter as a whole. Campbell, whom Jones called an underrated musician in the Vulture interview, also took to Twitter to address the rumors of his involvement with Jones as a whole after they began to resurface. Now I'm trending folks will really say some disgusting things, the singer said. Tevin was M by Quincy, Gita foe with the devil, he continued. Several laughing emojis accompanied the tweet. Campbell also tweeted a quote from Jones, God is pushing the bad in our face to make us fight back. 
Living up to his hit song, Can We Talk for a Minute, Campbell decided to mount the podium in an attempt to clear the air more about the stories spreading about him, and suffice it to say, this man spoke for much longer than a minute. I started this when I was 12 years old, so I had really didn't have time to sort of process all of that. The singer appeared on the People Every Day podcast for an in-depth interview where he discussed his life and career, also revealing for the first time how life for a gay man in the industry is completely different from what people outside the entertainment sphere could ever imagine. Talking about his musical past, Campbell said, I refer to myself as a former child star because that's just what I am. When Tevin was just 12 years old, celebrity maker Benny Medina picked him up as a kid from Waxahachie, Texas. After a little while, the singer, who was just 13 years old, was thrust into the musical spotlight by none other than Quincy Jones. And what do you know? The globe explodes with excitement as this young talent was dubbed the next Michael Jackson. The comparison was a big compliment that came with a lot of pressure, says Campbell. I just kind of wanted to be me, you know? Instead, he was packaged as a young, heteros heartthrob. Talking about those plans after hitting his marks with major records like I'm Ready in 1993, Campbell admitted, I don't think the S symbol thing worked, but the love songs last. I think that, uh, I don't think the symbol thing worked. Well, even fans agreed as one user on X spoke about it saying, I think it's funny that Quincy Jones thought Tevin Campbell could be a S symbol. Shh, cracks me up every time it comes on. Again, the only reason Campbell's name even appears next to Jones's is because of the claims of the pair getting intimate in the slow days of the singer's rise to fame. Sure, he shut the stories down and claimed those were only stories manufactured by bitter people, but there might be more to it. You see, Campbell isn't the first or second person who's been alleged to have had an inappropriate relationship with Quincy Jones in the industry back in the day. Another person who seems to have fallen in that net is Ludacris. And just like with Jaguar Wright outing Campbell, Cat Williams was the one who outed Luda for his unsavory experience as Jones's protege. Weeks back, Cat Williams took time during his conversation with Sue Knight to preview a diss track directed at Ludacris after the Fast and Furious star previously posted a diss of his own directed at Williams. Williams then brought in the big guns. In real life, I'm fast and furious. In real life, N, you buy curious, R. Williams. The creator of the World War III comedy special also said, Ludacris, you must be out your rabbit a mind. Made a rap song, but N, you ain't say I'm effing lying. Later in the verse, Cat Williams suggested Ludacris had S with a music industry icon. The 52-year-old Cincinnati native R. Never personally been with Quincy Jones, but you, that was your girl, girl, boy, boy. Don't play with these toys, I'm in to be avoided. Meanwhile, fans have commented on these allegations with many claiming that there might be some truth to Williams's words. After that, 2016 Quincy Jones interview with Rolling Stone magazine, I realized that Quincy was Diddy before Diddy was Diddy, but Quincy was Diddy on steroids. I bet old boy had Luda hogtied and ball gagged, one fan commented. A second fan added, I keep hearing Quincy was doing a lot to young men in Hollywood. Looks like the stories about Tevin Campbell might have been more than just stories after all. Or maybe we're all wrong. What do you think? That's it. Goodbye.